Hello fellow accountants, welcome to learning at igcseaccounts.com. Please do visit our website at www.igcseaccounts.com. If you go to the notes section you'll find the notes that go along with this tutorial and the easiest way to follow the tutorial is to right click over the button that says notes click here and download it onto your desktop which should be much quicker than waiting for it to load up on your web browser. My name is Dean Elhoss and today we are looking at the double entry system for assets, capital and drawings. So the recording of transactions was invented some 500 years ago uh, by Luca Pacioli and involves using a double entry system to record the debit and the credit of every transaction. So if you like it's the giving and taking effect. So if we look at the first transaction on the handout you'll see that the owner starts the business with $10,000 in cash on the date of the 1st of August. When we consider the giving and the taking effect it's very very important to think about what's coming into the business and what's going out of the business. So in this case we have $10,000 which in reality is leaving the owners or in this case the, um, the ladies pocket and is entering the business. So here you can see a funnel almost of money going into the business bank account. So if we look at the giving and taking or the in and out, what's coming into the business in this case is the $10,000 and it's leaving the ladies pocket in the form of an investment so she becomes an owner but she has to give away 10,000 of her dollars to the business to put as a resource into the bank account so we would record this using the T accounts as discussed in the previous tutorial by showing a debit and a credit entry the owner will have to give $10,000 and that is recorded on the credit side of the capital account. So on the 1st of August, which is the date, what leaves the owner's pocket in this case is $10,000 and what comes into the business bank or cash account is $10,000 on the 1st of August. It's very very useful, I always find, to think of what enters the business on the debit side as, if you like, part of the transaction that comes into the company. And here on the credit side to think of what's actually leaving the owner's pocket. Well, in this case it's $10,000 going out of her pocket and that's why we would record it on the credit side. Now often in the ledger where all the T accounts are recorded what happens is that the T accounts will uh, appear on different pages. So we need to cross reference where the other half of the double entry actually is recorded. So in this case, if you can imagine the capital account was on page number one and the cash account was on page number 25, then how do we know where to find the other half of the transaction? Well, the other half of the double entry you can see here is recorded in the cash account and the other half if you're on page number 25 of the double entry for capital is recorded in the capital account and that's where we would look to find the credit entry. Looking at the second transaction in this example um, we can see that the company bought a motor van on the 2nd of August for $2,750. So again we would need to consider the dual aspect the concept of giving and taking or debit and credit and we would look at what we have to give to gain that asset of a motor van. Well 
if we look at the money that the investor has kindly <laughs> invested into our bank or cash account of ten thousand dollars we're going to have to use some of that money to pay for our new delivery van so we're going to gain an asset if you like which is equal to the van so the giving here is going to be the cost of the van and that will need to be paid to the company that sells you the van and in return what we take from that company is the resource of a motor vehicle which we can use to deliver our goods to our customers. So if we were looking at how we would go about recording the double entry, we use the same cash T account that we referred to in the first transaction and the giving if you like the money need that needs to come out of the business will be recorded on the credit side and that amount as discussed was 2750 on the 2nd of August and that payment will leave our cash account on the credit side and will go into the motor vehicle account on the debit side because what comes into our business is this new van that we can use to deliver our goods. Again the date is referred to and we cross-reference the T account so that we know where the other half of the double entry is. In this case the other half of the transaction can be found in the cash account in a T account on another page if you like and if we were looking for the other half of the transaction and we were looking at the cash T account we would find it in the motor van T account. So if we look at the third transaction now we would in this case record the asset of fixtures but in a slightly different way. Here we've bought fixtures which are your doors and tables and chairs that we need as an asset to be able to operate or run our business but we have actually purchased them if you like or bought them from a creditor who is happy to take payment at a later date. So again if we look at the dual aspect concept we can see that there is still a giving and a taking according to Luca Pacioli's um, system. In this case the creditor who is a liability in the eyes of the accountant is going to give us the fixtures and allow us to pay at a later date. In most cases they give you three months to pay back. How would we go about recording that? Well again if you think of the credit side of the T account as the out, Furniture Fitters, the company, our creditors are going to give us the fixtures so it's going to be recorded on the credit side of their T account and what we gain is going to go into our T account which is an asset T account on the debit side. Again we would cross reference where the other half of the double entry is because these T accounts are likely to be recorded on different pages in your ledger book. The fourth transaction is to do with the actual payment that we're going to make to our creditor. So if we look at the date of the payment we can see that number four in our example here says that we pay $1,150 on the 17th of August to Furniture Fitters to pay off our bill if you like or our debt. So in terms of the giving and taking effect remember that our creditor gave us the fixtures now we're going to have to pay back after three months the amount that we owe him. 
So the amount that we borrowed, if you like, in terms of the asset that we gained is going to have to go out of our bank or cash account in this case and it will go back into the creditor account who receives the money as a form of asset that they can put into their bank account and use to buy and sell more goods. So the recording of this transaction again looks at the credit which will be on the right hand side of our cash account and when we pay off the 1150 that money is going to leave our cash account and go into the creditor account on the debit side and it will be recorded on the date on which the transaction actually occurs which is August the 17th. Um, thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial useful then please do wait around for the next tutorial to load up in the playlist. Remember you can download handouts, past papers and mark schemes as well as interactive games at our website www.igcseaccounts.com. If you're studying AS level accounts or A2 level accounts please do visit our sister website at www.alevelaccounts.weebly.com